to the introduction of spatial analysis to evaluate socio-spatial segregation and the accessibility of foundational services on the city scale. The design of the urban plan affords different ways of people and communities living together. To approach inclusion and segregation on the city scale, we will describe four analyses. The spatial connectivity between districts, the borders that separate neighborhoods, the presence of local mixed-use centers, and the distinction of neighborhoods by types of housing. Afterwards, these physical analyses will be combined and related with the map of income distribution as an indicator for understanding the socioeconomic segregation in the city. We take a closer look now at the city of Amsterdam. Currently home to about 875,000 inhabitants, with more than half of them having migrated there. Amsterdam is the core of the metropolitan region, with about 2.5 million inhabitants embedded between the North Sea in the west and the Eiselmeer Lake in the east. The city grew concentrically. And currently is distinguished by eight districts, further subdivided into different neighborhoods. As you could see in the last slides, Amsterdam grew in patches. One of the largest extensions, the General Extension Plan from 1935, was planned by the urban designers Van Eesteren and Van Lohausen. They were first appointed urban design professors at TU Delft and as such are predecessors of our urban design section in the architecture faculty. In their approach, they emphasized the relevance of urban design as a multiscalar discipline. For the extension of Amsterdam, they employed a strategy of connecting main streets to relate the old city of Amsterdam with the new extension areas. In continuing the main city streets, the old and the new city districts could be connected well. Let us now have a closer look at what makes a main street. We look for long continuous streets, mostly historically grown, connecting two centers in the urban plan. This street does not only act as a connector between districts, but also is a connector between the areas on both sides of the street. A core quality thereby is that pedestrians can still cross the street. Such main streets are the first spatial component that contributes to inclusive city design. The second spatial component we are looking at are urban borders. Peripherality can lead to exclusion. It is therefore important to understand what spatial design or situation can lead to the development of borders. Borders are spatial elements that separate areas. Separation develops when vocability and reachability between areas is interrupted. Let's have a look again at the city map of Amsterdam. Borders can be formed by architectural elements like walls, but also larger urban elements like rivers, transport infrastructure, such as big roads or train tracks. Zooming in, we can identify and show the main elements that form borders between districts. For example, canals, train tracks, highways or large streets that interrupt the natural flow of pedestrian movement. In this way, we identify places that might need a spatial intervention to connect districts better. Such interventions reduce the effect of the element as a border. Interventions could be, for example, to downgrade streets, transform a highway or a car traffic-oriented street into a walkable street, establishing new connecting main roads between districts, or build bridges across rivers and canals. You see that this type of intervention is usually a major infrastructure change and thus requires longer-term planning and related budget. Music